Have you ever heard someone say, that's not how I pictured it? Have you ever felt that you've been living in a scene that you did not picture? We all have a picture of what we thought our life was going to be, and not just for ourselves, but also for our children. How many of you as parents or grandparents have been like, I didn't picture that for my child. I truly believe my child was gonna go to college and they were gonna stay in college. I pictured my marriage differently. I pictured my experiences differently. I pictured my family differently. How often do we have a picture that is quite different than the reality that we live in? January 1st always is an important day in our lives, not just because it is the first day of the year and the eighth day of Christmas, but it also concludes the entry period of the Father Meyer Christmas card competition. So yesterday, um, I had to start the laborious task of organizing and sorting through my Christmas cards and judging them. And I'm not a very judgmental person, so it's a very hard task to do. Um, there are a group of cards that do not get judged that people send me. Um, these are people who send me Christmas cards that are family photos. Um, I learned early on in my priesthood that if I judge these, um, I'm not liked by a lot of people. Uh, but as I was looking at all of these family photos that people send in, it made me think. How often do things not seem as we pictured them to be? How often in our lives we picture one thing and yet something radically different happens? How do we deal with that? How do we grapple with that? I believe that the Magi had a pretty clear picture of what they thought they were going to encounter. Yet the reality is, is that's not what they encountered. They encountered something quite different. A great question for us is where do the pictures come from that we have in our mind of our lives? Who formed them? Who made them? Now, for the Magi, it's pretty simple to know where their picture came from. Their picture came from the Old Testament. That's what they had. Did you know that there are over 300 Old Testament prophecies? about Jesus. People have, have done the statistics on this of the probability of 300 prophecies all happening to one person. And like, it's mind-boggling when you begin to realize who Jesus is in the fact that he fulfills every single prophecy. Yet nonetheless, I truly do believe that the Magi had a picture in mind. The question is, what was that picture? And was it what they were expecting? Or was it something radically different? This Friday marks uh, January 7th, which is actually six months to the day since Father Mayan and I have begun this new project here in Dearborn County. And it dawned on me just a few days ago that in the past six months, since I've been pastor of four parishes in Dearborn County, I have not done one sign homily, and I have no idea why. So I've decided, in honor of six months of no sign homilies, that this morning I will give you a sign homily, and it'll have six signs. So, I need six altar boys. I'd like to talk about the prophecies, not all 300, but I'd like to talk about some of the prophecies that we think about when it comes to Jesus' birth. When we cast our eyes over here at the nativity scene, we have a picture in mind, right? <laughs> it's 
is, this is so perfect. Like, literally, this is so perfect. <laughs> hey, guys, how many prophecies am I going to talk about? Six. Six. Yeah. <laughs> I love my life on so many levels. You have no idea. This is so great. Okay, this, okay moving on. Um, I want to talk about these prophecies. The first prophecy was actually in today's gospel passage. It comes from Micah chapter 5. It reveals the fact that the Savior will be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem, this small, insignificant town, will bring forth the Savior of the world. We know from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9 that the Messiah is going to be a king. For unto us a child is born, a son is given to us, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We know from Isaiah chapter 7 that he will be born of a virgin, and that they will name him Emmanuel. These are all things that like, are part of our picture, right? Like when we think of Christmas, this is what we're talking about. Like This is amazing. We know from, from Psalm 72 that they will come and bring him gold and frankincense. We also know from Psalm 72, verse 9, that shepherds will come and the lowly will come and worship him. What picture did the wise men have? What picture did the magi have? And was it accurate? Where did the Magi first go when they were looking for the Messiah? They went to King Herod, because where do you find kings? You find them in palaces. Where do you find royalty? Among other royal people. Where do you find mighty rulers? With those who live lives of comfort. You see, my brothers and sisters, the question is, who has crafted the picture of our lives? Well, it's the same person who crafted the picture for the life of the Son of Man, which is God himself, revealed to us in sacred scripture. So let's look at one more of those 300 biblical passages that prophesy the birth and the life of Jesus Christ. For those of you who come to the Passion Service on Good Friday at either 3 o'clock or 7 o'clock here at All Saints. This is the first reading. Isaiah chapter 53. As you hear this gospel passage, as you hear this Old Testament passage, this prophecy about Jesus, I want you to hear it in the context of Christmas. So as I read it, I ask you to just kind of like gaze your eyes over to the nativity. And listen to Isaiah 53. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before us, like a shoot from the crushed earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him nor an appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those for whom men hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, what we thought of him as stricken as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses and crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole, and by his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearer, he was silent 
and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? A grave was assigned for him among the wicked, a burial place with evildoers. And though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, if he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light of the fullness of days. Through his sufferings, his servant shall justify many. Because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. Who crafted the picture that the Magi had of our Lord? It is only in the fullness of divine revelation, it's only in the fullness of scripture that we clearly know and understand who Christ is. Yes, there were angels, and yes, there was a star, and yes, there was gold, and yes, there was frankincense, but that's not the full story. That's not the full picture. So who has crafted the picture of your life? When we say that, well, that's not how I pictured things, or that's not how I pictured that happening, That's not how I pictured my child's life unfolding. Where did that picture come from? And was it the right picture? Was it formed by Instagram or Facebook or the world or comfort? Where did that picture come from? On my mom's side of the family, when I was a young child, a common Christmas gift was a puzzle. As a young child, you get a puzzle with 25 pieces, and then it would grow to 50, and then it would grow to 75, and then you would start getting puzzles in the 100s, all the way up to 1,000 puzzle pieces. I've never put together a jigsaw puzzle with 1,000 pieces. But I want you to use this as an analogy. When you make a puzzle... The first thing you do is you look at the top of the box and you're like, here's the picture and here's the pieces. Can you imagine putting together a puzzle with the wrong picture? Can you imagine putting together a puzzle with the wrong picture? I think that's how many of us live our lives. All the pieces are there. And if you put the pieces together, it'll make a beautiful picture. But we have the picture wrong. And so the pieces don't go together. And we keep trying to force the pieces to go together because we have the wrong picture. The reality is, is that the way of suffering and the way of struggle And the way of human dynamics and sin and brokenness is part of every single one of our pictures. And yet we keep trying to say that it's not. And we keep using a picture that doesn't work. And it's only when we look at the whole picture that we can realize the beauty of God's plan of salvation, not only in his life, but in ours. What picture did the Magi have? Were they disappointed when they got to Bethlehem and saw a child among animals? A child persecuted by his own king? A child rejected? What picture do we have of our own lives? As we try to figure out the puzzle of life Let's pray for that grace to make sure we have the right picture. A picture rooted in truth, a picture rooted in Christ, a picture that's been framed 
by truth, by reality, and by God's unique plan for every single one of us. In doing so, God will be with us. In doing so, God's grace will be with us. In doing so, God willing, we'll become the saints of his kingdom. Amen.